Hello, beautiful people all around the world. It's Cryptonauts. Yes, welcome back to another episode of Cryptocurrency Chat. I am your host, Blockchain John, here with my co-host, Jake Jabarelli, ready to give you the crypto news of the day. Actually, for the weekend. It's the Sunday edition, the February 26, 2023, episode 491. We're getting that much closer to episode 500. That's crazy. That is crazy. What's yep. up, Jake? Wow, it's good. Good Sunday night for a bit of news, as it always is with the recap of the week and this week in crypto. Starting out oh, this week in crypto. My, You're wearing my U proof uh, t shirt. <laughs> protocol. There you Got go. It. This awesome. From, uh, the Blockchain Expo. Yep. So, this week in crypto Twitter, NFT community once creator royalties back. What? All right. This. Uh, there were ubiquitous losses among the leader, leading cryptocurrencies this week at the latest inflation readings prompted fears among investors that the Federal Reserve will keep raising interest rates this year. No, not more raising. We're high enough already as it did all of last year. Prices were the last thing on people's mind when there was a plethora of other issues on people's mind this week. M. Shadows, the singer for California metal band Avenged Sevenfold, took umbrage on Monday with NFT marketplace OpenSea after the la latter last week stopped enforcing the practice of ensuring creators get a 5-10% to cut on the future resale of their work. What the heck, dudes? And I'll read the, quick, the tweet here real quick in response to the news. 18 months ago, when we started DBC, we had a discussion about the, how the marketplaces collected royalties and understood the fact that someday they could simply not comply. In response, we built some fail-safes that could simply block these platforms from accessing our collection. Hmm. That day, the, fin the Financial Times broke a story that Galios Capital, uh, Gal Galois, I don't know, I'm butchering that name, I apologize. A crypto-focused hedge fund had closed down after having earlier deposited half of its $200 million in assets under management at the time in the now-collapsed FTX exchange. Co-founder Kevin Zhu appeared to be tweeting from the fund's account. <laughs> Uh, here he is. I appreciate the outpouring of support today when the FT article came out. Thank you for your kind words. In spite of that, I am proud to say that we, that although we lost half of our assets to the FTX disaster and then sold the claim for cents on the dollar, we are among the few who are closing shop with an inception to date performance, which is still positive. It's amazing he can stay positive. It sounds like Do Kwan. On Tuesday, NFT news account NFT Now broke the story that what appears to be an elaborate multi-million dollar rug pull. Oh boy, another one. News, friends with yous, uh, Frenzies project deleted its Twitter account after posting an announcement that the project would be put on pause. The project raised $5 million in a Dutch auction last year. Frenzies, rug pull, thank you. And we're out. <laughs> Fox Business journalist Eleanor Terrett uh, that day gave an update on the ongoing case against FTX founder and former CEO Samuel, really, I actually give his full name here, Samuel Bankman Freed, who stands charged with eight crimes, including wire fraud and conspiracy, commit money laundering. And I'm not going to read her tweet. That day, self professed crypto data nerd, OX Kofi, expressed his concern that st upstart uh, NFT marketplace Blur which recently surpassed OpenSea in sales volume, believe it or not, was being dominated by a handful of professional traders. He called the lack of creators' royalties short-sighted in a later tweet. And he said 53% 50, of Blur's volume comes just from 500 wallets. Wow. Similar numbers to Kofi uh, made the rounds again the following day. And here Poof ETH says, Hey, here's some fun facts about NFT volume. 20% of Blur's volume comes from only 15 wallets. Wow. 50% of Blur's volume comes from less than 300 wallets. Watch the top 500 farmers drive artificial volume live over any time frame with the source below. It's a bunch of BS. Don't watch it. The same day, crypto-friendly Republican House Majority Whip Tom Emmer, Republican from Minnesota, introduced a bill proposing to bar the Federal Reserve from issuing a central bank digital currency, or CBDC, uh, directly to individuals, a move which yes. he argues would erode Americans' rights to financial privacy, as John has been saying yes. all this time. 
So I guess you're a Republican now. I'm just kidding. Um, the CBDC Anti-Surveillance State Act would also require the American Central Bank to report to Congress about its experiments with digital currencies. Don't tell it. Don't do it without telling us what you're doing. Transparency. Transparency. Mm -hmm. Anyways, he said today I introduced the CBDC Anti-Surveillance State Act to halt efforts of unelected bureaucrats in Washington D.C. Uh, from stripping Americans of the right to financial privacy. Crypto sleuth Isabel Hunter on Wednesday posted the result of an investigation into the where the $1 billion of Shiba Inu tokens that uh, Ethereum creator Vitalik Buterin donated to India's COVID-19 relief uh, <laughs> effort actually went. It turns out that $58 million, which is nowhere close to $1 billion, of it went to uh, reached its intended recipients in the end. $58 billion. Uh, sorry, million. $58 million. Point oh. Oh, five, eight. Yeah, not a whole lot. The rest is a wild story. And she has an eight post thread, but I'm going to read the second half. 58 million has reached India through the crypto relief so far. The last fund was made in July 2022, approximately 40 million sitting in cash in Puerto Rico, based in FV Bankus. Uh, according to the screenshots of February 23rd, bank statements provided by Nile Wall. Yeah, um, that sucks. <laughs> It shows you that um, even nonprofit organizations will, uh, will oh, scam but your money, man. I, I, and I hate to say it this way, but India has a corruption problem. Um, the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, Hester Price, uh, Pierce, pardon me, not Price, Pierce, who uh, last week broke ranks to criticize her uh, agency's crypto custodial proposal, tweeted her mind again this week on Wednesday. She appeared to fire a subliminal shot at her boss, Chair, uh, Chairman Gary Gensler, who is unpopular, yeah, in the crypto industry for his regulation by enforcement strategy, which has so far involved suing high-profile crypto companies while offering the industry lot, little guidance on how to be compliant. This is what everybody has been saying, including yeah. Bankman Free. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to read her tweet there. Uh, that day... Bitcoin bull ZK Shark hyped up the Bitcoin NFTs, although he conceded between the lines. They're not NFTs, they're inscriptions. I know. Um, that they have less utility than their Ethereum counterparts. Oh, yeah? Less utility? Is it because they're permanent? <laughs> so here's this. I'm going to read his this. Ordinals. No royalties. No metadata. No good wallets. Yet. No marketplace. Yet. It's because they're so new. No holder verification. No mutability. No smart contracts. No tokens. No AMMs. You know why there's no smart contracts? Because there's no rug pulls. Anyways, every inscription will forever, will live forever on the most decentralized public ledger known to man. That's the damn utility. On Thursday, Ryan Selkis, founder of crypto market in intelligence company Masari, announced a 15% cut to his company's workforce. Out you go! That's not what he said. Also that day, Montana's state state's decision to protect the interest of crypto miners went down a treat uh, on the crypto Twitter. That's a weird way of saying it. Okay. Anyways, they passed the bill saying crypto miners are protected in Montana, where it's very cheap Good. to mine. On Friday, Thank you. yes, it is. On Friday, an NFT researcher who tweets as Punk9058, probably 59, uh, shared a chart that no doubt worried a lot of BAYC fans. Uh, from high efficiency to low volatility paradigm to cliff diving. Yeah. Mm. Um, a lot of, lot of stuff oh, going that, down. It, this is the most <laughs> recent one. I think uh, uh, one of the biggest uh, NFT holders was, dumped like 100,000. 100, I think it was 100,000 100, NFTs yeah. all at once. Yep. This is what happens when people move stuff. Really big stuff, and and since there's no insert, insider trading and, and no lim limitations oh. on the open market, I mean, I'm not saying insider trading doesn't happen. I'm just saying that it's an open market. You can do what you want. This finally, article, oh, yeah, okay, finally okay, Polygon, okay, Matic, crashed hard this week, shedding 21% in seven days to trade at $1.22 the time of his writing. Matic began its downward slide on Tuesday when news broke that Polygon Labs was laying off 100, 100 employees, 20% of its workforce, after restructuring, Avalanche founder and CEO Iman Gursatter Sire fired, <laughs> fired some shots at the rival blockchain. Pro tip, there's no reason for a good proof-of-stake protocol ever should reorg. <laughs> That's a good comment. 
Meanwhile, Uniswap founder and CEO Hayden Adams offered technical advice. Polygon needs to make moves publicly to solve its reorg problem. 157 blocks reorg, five minutes of history. Yesterday and 120 uh, in December is bad and can break bridges. Central exchange, etc. Maybe consensus algo change or social consensus based hard fork to slash the validator? Hmm. Well, what's right. indirectly being said here is that you, that Polygon actually did get did go down. Yeah, it went down twice over the weekend. Yep, and it did affect a few companies out there because when the network's down, these companies can no longer provide services to their clients or customers. Right, and it was down. It went down once. They tried to patch it up. It did not work. So it was continue. It, it stayed down uh, it, it, longer than expected, and they they finally brought it back up. But yeah, we were just talking about this on the last uh, last episode. It was in regards to the Explorer. The Explorer was down. Right. But right. this time, this weekend, it was... It actually went, went down, network. yes. It wasn't just the uh, scanner that went down. The whole network went down, <laughs> which is, yep. uh, I guess, a sign of what, have, what was actually going on. We were saying, well, they dodged a bullet by saying that, they, that the network didn't actually go down, but well, it was a precursor to the network going down. <laughs> yeah, so I guess what happened was, that what, what, what Polygon is saying is that... Uh, because their network is so um, congested with transactions, because they pr they produce like a hundred thousand transactions, I for, 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 forget exactly how many, but it's say for example hundred thousand transactions per second. Mm -hmm. like, since there's so many transactions going into the network, it's very hard for the uh, it's very difficult for the, uh, the 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 stake not the stakers the nodes the nodes to really process all, all that data, so it gets it gets it gets throttled. Yep. When it gets throttled, th there's nowhere for that network that network data to be pushed through, so it ends up just crashing the network. And so that's something that they need to figure out and resolve ASAP. This is since there's more and more companies. Just uh, as a, a side, accepting Polygon. just as a side to this, we could talk about how Hedera Hashgraph was saying that they could do was it five hundred thousand or a million something transactions per second. But yeah. Yeah. that's great. I mean, what was the bottleneck on Ethereum? Right, it could only do ten thousand or so transactions per second, even you know before rollups came along. But the uh, <laughs> Then the, the question is, okay, well, does that mean your nodes can support it? And I guess maybe they didn't think about that. So it's like, okay, great, lots of transactions, right. but <laughs> you, you could go so right, far as to say, on. yeah, go ahead. I'm not gonna. Go we'll ahead. talk no, about no, it. No, we'll, go ahead. I want to we'll, hear. I want to hear. You. Well, I mean, in in uh, one of the reasons that uh, it was suggested that something like Bitcoin come about in the '70s, although it was the technology which wasn't there was because of the way that the system was at the time, very, very slow. Obviously, it's gotten much faster since then. Computers have made things more possible to go faster with transactions. I'm, I'm talking about traditional transaction networks like um, Visa, MasterCard. Um, but then there's a reason why they can only go so fast because of the problems like we just are seeing with Polygon. So let's talk about coins. Right. Uh, this week in coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum dips as crypto markets shed $58 billion. All right. Let's see. It was a week of all around losses with holders of the two biggest cryptocurrencies by market capitalization, also hit by the bearish price action. Market leaders Bitcoin only depreciated by 6% over the last seven days and currently changes hands at $23,136, according to CoinGecko. Ethereum posted a slightly lighter loss of 7% over the same period to land on $1,604 at the start of the weekend. Beyond the market leaders, it was much of the same story across the board. Polygon Matic posted one of the biggest dips, shedding 16.7% this week to trade at $1.27. At the time of writing, Matic began its downward slide on Tuesday when news broke that Polygon Labs was laying off 100 employees, 20% of its workforce after restructuring. The following day, Polygon users fell prey to false rumors that the blockchain had been down for two hours. Maybe it is. I guess maybe it's false then. Hmm. I thought it was true. Oh, no, Hold it's on. true. Then this is revealed, this is written at a different time, so that's the reason it sounds okay, like it. Uh, Polygon later revealed that a few nodes on the network temporarily went out of sync. There it goes. Up causing the outage of independent chains explorer called uh, Polyscan since Poly... Poly, uh, Polygon scan hadn't updated with new blocks, uh, Polygon blocks uh, or transactions for a couple of hours. People mistakenly thought Polygon itself had stopped. And then after that, it actually did go down, right? Litecoin, Polkadot, and Cardano also posted significant losses on this week, ranging from 8 to 9%. Solana had spent 
most of the last November and all of December in free fall because of its association with executives from the collapse of FTX exchange. Since New Year's, it's managed to st st steamy, stymie, st stymie the no, losses. Stymie. Stymie. Yep. stymie the losses with the assets falling just 1% this week. It trades at $22.40 at the time of writing. The main reason Seoul managed to hold the fort this week were news of the upcoming migration of the Helium network to Solana and marked an increase in Solana NFT trading volumes. Similarly, the Uniswap token held off the bears, dropping just 1.4% over the week and currently selling for $6.61. The token's resilience may be due to the fact that as of Wednesday, users of Uniswap NFT's market can now transact with Uni and any other Ethereum-based token. All right. New rules proposed in Hong Kong, Canada, and U.S. Since the downfall of several high-profile crypto companies last year, including Terra, Celsius, Three Arrows Capital, and FTX, crypto regulation has become a recurring talking point for regulators across the world. Regulators in Hong Kong, Canada, and the United States were central to this week's high-level crypto chat. On Monday, Hong Kong Securities and Exchange, uh, excuse me, Securities and Futures Commission published a consultation paper proposing to, quote, allow, allow all types of investors, including retail investors, to access trading services provided by licensed VA or virtual assistant trading platform operators. The proposal recommends conditions be met before retail investors can trade crypto, including knowledge and risk assessments and potential caps to how much exposure traders can get. The commission also recommends that only large cap virtual assets be eligible for regulated trades. Hong Kong's financial secretary, Paul Chan, on Wednesday called Web3 a golden opportunity for the special administrative regions and promised to establish and lead a task force on VA virtual, uh, uh, virtual assets development with members from relevant policy bureaucs, financial regulators, and market participants to provide a recommendation on the sustainable and responsible development of the sector. <coughs> that same day, stateside Republican House Majority Whip Tom Emmer, Republican of Minnesota, introduced a bill proposing to bar the Federal Reserve from issuing a central bank digital currency, CBDC, directly to individuals, a move which he argues would erode Americans' rights to financial privacy. Good job. The CBDC Anti-Surveillance State Act would also require the American Central Bank to report to Congress about its experiments with digital currencies. Beautiful. The following day, the Federal Reserve issued a new statement reminding banks of the risk of exposure to crypto. The Feds was joined in this warning by gov government agencies, including the Federal Deposit is uh, Insurance Corporation and the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, OCC. Uh, across the border in Canada that day, the Canadian Securities and Administrators com uh, compromised in securities regulators from each of the 10 provinces and three territories in Canada published a list of new requirements for crypto companies wishing to stay compliant. Crypto traders in Canada are now prohibited from allowing customers to buy or deposit, quote, value reference crypto assets, VRCAs, a.k.a. stablecoins, without the CSA's prior written consent. Wow. Which in this case means issuers need to ensure that the stablecoins is fiat-backed. Um, oh, yeah. No, this is the problem with Terra, right? <laughs> it wasn't fiat-backed. If you want a real stable coin and there's a run on the market, you need to be able to, to pay all those people out. And if they if they can't pay out, it will collapse. It's exactly what happened to Terra and Luna. So let me ask you: Would you would you would you accept a stable coin that is a mixed bag of crypto and and stable coins? No. O only 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 one of one, right? It has to be a one to one. This has already been established. We already know this has to be the case, and that's the reason that that uh, Binance is getting rid of theirs is because theirs is not. As much as they would like to claim, 100% backed by one to one. So, the other thing is, you know, you're trying to make a stable coin. You ha I guess technically BUSD is against US dollar only, uh, but you can also make you know stable coins against other co currencies. But I know that a lot of the people are just like, well, um, it's easier to lie, so we're just gonna lie. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, moving on to the news of Nigeria. So, from Coindesk, why Nigerians aren't turning to the e-Naira 
despite crippling cash shortages. So what's really going on here? Apparently, uh, there is a terrible cash shortage in the nation of Nigeria. And so people just can't get cash. They just can't get it. And it's funny because it's like the United States, how many people actually carry cash anymore? Um, if there was a cash shortage, we would just go, well, we'll, we'll just use our digital equivalent, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which we've been doing yeah. for a long time anyway. So the United States doesn't have a CBDC, but we already have a CBDC. Um. <laughs> yeah, but the biggest difference from Nigeria to the United States is that we have a really uh, advanced built uh, infrastructure when it comes to uh, uh, digitizing uh, uh, currencies. Or digitizing right. We're the dollars. ones that created it, right? It, 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 yeah, the so digital the infrastructure is something the United Nigeria. States built, so... Um, yeah, so in regards to Nigeria, they don't have that, and that's what the biggest struggle right now is. That how do you expect people to utilize a CBDC when the network network is non-existent? Right. Well, th there's a lot of other problems per this article, and one of those big ones, not just cash shortages and not just low adoption, but internet access. And so, so not a lot of people seem to even have internet access. And on top of that, not even a whole lot of people have phones. That is, mobile I yeah. ISP phones. And I said like 20% of the entire population has has mobile phones, which I honestly thought was more than that, but yeah, I so too, yeah. but apparently it's not. So not a whole lot of people have phones that they can easily make transactions with, and the internet is not really all that prevalent. And so, of course, why is the low adoption? Well, there's hardly anybody using it because there's hardly any incentive to use it. So their rollout was even worse than uh, El Salvador's rollout was, which is disappointing. Well, yeah, no, well... Obviously, they've already been struggling for a while now. Um, it's so bad. I don't know if you if you hang out on Twitter and see what's going on in Nigeria. I don't. But if you ha hashtag Nigeria right now on Twitter, mm -hmm. viewers and the listeners out there, just get, get on Twitter, check that out. You'll see videos of all the riots and protests. I mean, oh, yeah, they were I even know that. True. They, they were literally surrounding one of the one of the uh, um, um, officials' home, and they were literally burning it down. They're burning down. Uh, the, the, the one of the um, representatives house with I, I don't know if the individuals were inside because we're only seeing from the perspective of what's going on on the street which said there's they're just chucking uh, uh, Molotovs at the house and just burning it down you know that's it's crazy cars are being tipped over buildings are being you know destroyed window shattered banks all ripped out ATMs are non-existent I mean there's nothing there it's crazy it's, it's all out you know, uh, like civilian war. The, the war, this civilians are just going out, just destroying everything because their economy just went went to crap. They they, they can't afford for the basic necessities just to live life. You need water, you need food, you need shelter. You can't do that without cash. And if cash is not there, you know what do you do? Right. right? You what, need what you need something do? that that makes the liquid interface between people and things be possible. I mean, you can always do and bartering, but bartering is uh, bartering is harder than liquid fiat. Yeah, well, yeah, it, there's a big disconnect to what's going on with the government because re with the government, they're all sitting nice uh, with, 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 with their fridges full, nice electricity, good homes, you know, they used to have the nice vehicles. You know, while if you, go, if you look out on the streets, it's, it's a, a absolute crisis that's going on out there. It's sad. You know, we're just seeing the adults out on the streets, but I can only imagine the children out there as well, you know? Right. It's crazy. It's sad. It's sad to know that this is going on. So, um, Having a CBDC forced on civilians is, is horrible. You know, they should have figured out a different way to do this. As of right now, um, I, I think Bitcoin would be the solution right now. Well, uh, Lightning I, Network. I agree with but you on this. Again. Lightning Network would be brilliant. But the, the fact of the matter is it's not that this, this nor anything else would quickly solve the problem. The problem really comes down to the fact that the uh, upper echelons in Nigeria don't care about the people. If they did, they would they wouldn't be in the prop, the situation they're literally in right now. So is not a not a perfect uh, hegemony or a perfect um, dictatorship, but it's darn close to it. So they're just like, let them eat CBDC, you know. <laughs> we don't really. One of the biggest problems that that we spoke of is that they don't have phones. They need they need a device. A device. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily need to even be um, on chain. Lightning, not lightning, can still be w utilized off chain. Off chain, you know, there's yeah. A lot of, there's, yeah, you can still use it. So, anyways, let's move on. Oh, sorry for that. Yep. So, Spotify. 
Spotify's token gated playlist. A powerful benefit for NFT projects overlord founder. Yes. Spotify. Beautiful. All right, so we do we do have our podcast on Spotify. It's great. Check it out. Go to Spotify. Check out Cryptocurrency Chat. you find us there on Spotify. In regards to what they're doing, they're coming out with a uh, an experimented Web3 like uh, NFT for playlist pretty much to... Uh, uh, from what I, from what I understood, what I read from this article is, uh, we we can create a private playlist, right? That's exclusive to members that hold a certain NFT that can unlock those playlists. That's yep. amazing! I love that idea. You know, I I definitely want to try this out. You know, it'd be great to have that that uh, opportunity to uh, to 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 utilize Web three with our podcast. Yeah, we were we were hoping that maybe since we have been on on Spotify, actually through Anchor FM for for quite some time now, pretty much since the beginning of the podcast, even before we were on YouTube, um, (laughs) that we could do the same thing and have our own custom, you know, you have to buy this NFT just to get access to our uh, custom playlist. At the moment, it seems like it's a a little bit of a marketing ploy, but I'm sure it will have its day and its purpose in in no time flat because people love exclusivity. Um, Why do you think Boyd Ape Yacht Club uh, NFTs went for so much money in the beginning? It's because of exclusivity. They only had so many of them. There's only 10,000 BAYC NFTs, so if you want one, you've got to pay a pretty penny for it, like more than one Ethereum. Um, And uh, the same thing in effect goes in here is if you had a particular set of playlists that only certain people could access with only having purchased a particular NFT, that NFT. Now, I mean, is all the music available? Yes, right now it is. And they, they even said that. But what if it was pre-released content that everybody wanted? What if there was something from a really famous artist that you really wanted to hear? Sorry, that music's not available until it's released to the to everyone. But it's only you know through through Spotify's uh, playlist listing, you can't get it unless you got that NFT. What do you say about that? Oh, I can copy this NFT picture all I want. It's like, no, no, no. You have to have it in your wallet or else you can't get access to that playlist. Because every single NFT is a unique X. That's a non-fungible token. Yeah, it's a unique. So it does, ha- it does have unique metadata on the back. And it's like a thumbprint. Everybody has a unique thumbprint. Yep. And every NFT has a unique uh, metadata, which allows, uh, which allows the, the, the playlist to be unlocked. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's a brilliant idea. I can't wait to see more of this happening. Like, you think you think Swifties will ever have their own NFTs? Mm, Taylor Swift fans? We'll see. We'll <laughs> see what happens. Yeah. So, all right. Continuing on, Web3 social startup Towns raises $25.5 million led by uh, A16Z, or Andreessen and Horowitz. What is this all about? Well, uh, you may have heard of Meta, <laughs> a.k.a. Facebook, and they're uh, delving into the metaverse, as it were. That's the renaming of the business. Well, Towns is an attempt to take something like Discord or like um, Telegram or Meta in the, in the Metaverse concept and make it available to anyone at any time, as opposed to Slack, or pardon me, not Slack, but I guess Slack is one example. Um, in particular, I keep thinking of Discord, which we use. In fact, we're on Discord right now recording our, our podcast. Um, but Discord's owned by a, you know, a centralized entity. And the idea with... Uh, Towns is that it would be decentralized. It would be a not a DAO per se, but a system that is completely separate from any one company. Although there is a town, a, a company, the Towns company, that is doing the development for it, as there is with the development for Ethereum or any other network. Uh, but that company does not own the Towns. You own the Towns by investing in it through their Towns token or Towns network. So. I think this is the start of what could be an absolutely amazing set of possibilities in the upcoming years. Uh, if something like Discord comes out that is entirely uh, blockchain-based and that all your interactions are only available through that network, then you don't have to... I mean, granted, you do need, still need the developer to exist, but once it's out there, it's yours. And I think that's brilliant. Now, my question is, uh, I didn't read the entire article, but is it federated or non-federated, uh, um, I guess, towns, mm-hmm. uh, uh, town, towns networks? And the reason I say that is because if it's like a federated network, that means there's a manager or somebody managing the network um, and, and censoring people's uh, uh, um, data or information that, that, that they're publishing. And basically eliminate, imagine, imagine if you had an account there for, you know, two, three, four, five years, 
and uh, you have all these years of, of information on there. Well, for whatever reason, you and the owner of this town um, uh, gets into it, and they don't like you. They can just delete you. All your stuff is gone. You do not exist. I mean, you could now, say the difference was. Does your do you own difference. your own data? Is that what you're saying? Uh, is the data decentralized? You know, uh, in regards to something like this, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, know I don't. If, I, if, the article if, doesn't if specify. Okay, exactly. So, uh, in regards to Noster, Bitcoin's Noster, I, I call it Bitcoin's Noster because that's normally what people use it for. Uh, with Lightning, the Noster, on the other hand, is a, is a protocol that is pretty much like this. It's like a Twitter, like a decentralized Twitter, where um, there's people that there's clients. You can become a client and 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 host data. But even if I publish data on Noster. And if somebody wants to censor me, they technically can on their relay, right? Mm -hmm. If there's people out there posting uh, 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 black market stuff, terrorism, uh, sexual explicit material, you know, that stuff can be filtered out by, by, by the client holders or these relays, right? Right. But it, it doesn't mean that that data is being eliminated from the network. No. Because there's almost... I, I want to, I, w I would love to say an infinite amount of, of networks out there. There's so many that I can't use them all as of right now. It's, it's still new. It's only uh, like six months old. Right. And already I can't tell you how many relays there are. When I say relays, just imagine websites, right? Yep. And every website that's hosted on the Noster uh, protocol, right. Uh, uh, cross communicates. I can link them and my data will continuously live on, on these other relays. Right. However, you know, just just in case, just because I get filtered on one doesn't mean that there's another network. So maybe there's somebody out there that that does decide that they want to host, you know, uh, uh, terrorism data. So that's 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 their forte. They're probably gonna yep. cop. Well, I mean, we talked. You talked about this with the guy who described what ordinals were, uh, in the sense of it's like each country has its own set of what is good and what is bad. You know, its own uh -huh. set of rules. And in, you know, in particular, the United States doesn't particularly approve of nudity, whereas if you were in Germany, they wouldn't care about that at all. They're like, yeah, be as nude as you like. But here in this, in this country, we like violence. So you're in Germany, they hate violence, so they'd be censoring that stuff. And if you were all into alcoholism and prostitution, you wouldn't be seeing much of that in um, Saudi Arabia or UAE or something. So it just depends on your country and what they, your country approves what's its morality levels allow if you don't i mean that content's still going to be there uh assuming somebody's willing to host it as you say so that so nasa is great for that because like you said you know uh, other countries can host a cer certain types of uh, um data versus other countries right now unlike uh towns i don't know if they allow that i don't know if they just well it's a it's an alpha project we'll have to see <laughs> it's so yeah, new they don't <laughs> See, but that I, I want to bring that awareness to the people that are trying to look at getting into this. Right. Is that be aware that if they are centralized and they're federated, the federated network they can close down your 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 profile and all your data there is gone. Maybe it'll be a fantastic thing. It'll probably be. It looks beautiful. I'm looking at it right now. Well, this is great. Just from the looks of it, it looks like it looks like Discord. It sounds like it's going to be DAO based, which means it will be some kind of organization that's controlling it, but will be the members of the organization that control it. So, um, it won't it, it, it won't be the people who create. It's not the developers who own it; it's the the owners of that particular town, which exactly. kind of makes sense. That, well, exactly, that's what I'm saying. Is that those individuals? If you ever have beef with those individuals that owns that town, you know. In the, in the future, even though you've been you've been on their network for a while or been in their town for a while, if they don't like you, they'll boot you, all your stuff will be eliminated, and everybody that you followed, everybody that follows you, is all gone. And with Nostra, that doesn't exist. You know, right. people that follow you on one network, if you get if you get uh, 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 censored out of one, that's okay because those people that follow you there and the people that you follow are, are still connected on the Nostra protocol. Right. Everywhere you go. So, if you're an asshole and not everybody likes you, then you can go wherever you like and people can still follow you. Or if you're woke for some reason and people hate your wokeness, then you can just go where the woke people are and other people can block you. So. Exactly. Exactly. All right, but, moving on. Yeah. Coinbase is building its own Layer 2 network called Base. Yes. It's true. It's finally here. It's actually been in the works for a couple of years. Uh, uh, um, uh, Coinbase has been trying to build their own network for a while. They're, they're, they're actually trying to work on Layer 1. I don't think the article says it. 
Uh, they were trying to build their own uh, layer one for I think uh, three three or four years. If I'm mistaken. It's been it's been a few years that they've been trying to develop their own layer one, but it didn't work. Um, uh, whatever they're trying to build didn't work. And so as time goes on, uh, now we're at this point with base, Coinbase's base uh, building a layer two on uh, on Ethereum, and it's building off of the uh, uh, what's uh, OP uh, Optimism. Yeah, Optimism. Optimism. Mm -hmm. uh, optimism uh, chain. Which is supposed to just be once again more a uh, more uh, uh, fee friendly, uh, energy efficient, and and uh, throughput uh, uh, a lot a lot faster with throughputs, uh, which which is great. Yep. Uh, my thing is what we're talking about off air is that I don't know if this is going to be a big wow you know uh, 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 network just because uh, from my experience with Coinbase's uh, wallet, it doesn't seem to be all that. Amazing. It's just it's basic. So whatever they're trying to build, hopefully it is the best of the best. There's nothing out out there out there like it. Or are they going to come out with something that's just like wow, that's this is it. This is what you're. You, this is what you spent hundreds uh, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, uh, to to build something so basic. We don't know. Obviously, uh, we'll see what happens in the next few months. But it's official. Base is going to be a thing. And uh, let's see. Isn't Jack Dorsey coming out with one? I think we talked about this uh, like six months ago. From I'm mistaken. Uh, yeah, I remember. Uh, it was uh, what was it? It was um, I read the white paper and I forgot the name of it. <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be the layer five, right? Right, uh, I remember. Yeah, they were talking about that. Yeah. Well, I don't know what happened with that. I I gotta look. I gotta look back into that. Anyways, this is what's going on with with uh, with Coinbase. They're still developing stuff. What's interesting about this this uh, base protocol, a layer two, is that they they it's it's agnostic. It's going to be, uh, they're going to be able to, to, to plug in multiple chains in it. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, they, they will not have their own token, uh, at least for this particular uh, 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 network. I like because they already have uh, USDC. Maybe they'll use that. I don't know. But they, they don't, they're, they're not going to have anything on there. Um, uh, and what else? What else was there? I'm, these are just things that I'm thinking off my head that I, I when I read this earlier in the week. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they want initial they, no no token. Uh, right. let's no see. token. Yeah, they do have a lot a lot of a uh, lot of partners already, which is great. Uh, first, the first ones that are going to be u utilizing the networks, Chainlink. Um, uh, let's see, Ave. It's going to continue to grow. After that, yep. All I got. What's interesting is that they're not they're not utilizing Bitcoin. There's no Bitcoin here. It's non-existent. It'll be a Bitcoinless. Well, I mean, it's based off channel. Ethereum, right? So it's not really going to be a Bitcoin thing, anyways. But yeah, it's well, well, it it remains to be seen whether or not Base like, will be say agnostic if they're not yeah. really agnostic. Yeah, it remains to be seen whether or not uh, Base will be all that they're trying to make it out to be. We'll have to wait and see when it comes on line and is available for everyone to mock. I mean, uh, use. <laughs> anyways. Right, Without that, twenty-two thousand five hundred and fifty-three dollars. It is up by one point five percent. I am hoping that it goes under twenty k because I want to buy some more. Um, but we'll see. Dollar uh, cost averaging. Strong at twenty-three. Yeah, it's been holding solid right at twenty-three. Yeah, it's been fluctuating up and down though. I mean, it went up. It, this last week has been up very little, but it's uh, what was it broke twenty-five once in the last three weeks? I think. Yeah. But it seems like the the bottom is at twenty three right now. I mean, even though it's gone lower, it's gone like twenty two five. Mm -hmm. But then you know, shortly after that, it'll come back up at twenty three. Now it's at twenty three five. We'll see what happens in the next next weekend. Yep. Um, Normally, this is the time that it changes if there's something to be changed because this is when China comes online or the you know Southeast Asia and Asian countries, uh, that it's side it's of the I world. Was through, I was looking through the blocks, um, and then somebody even posted this. Which was like, oh my God! There's people out there that are literally doing this. Uh, we don't know who it is. Nobody knows who it is. But there's an individual out there, or or a a institution out there that is literally buying a hundred million dollars worth of Bitcoin every single day. How? Explain that to me. I don't know if they're buying it and selling it, buying it and selling it's it. El Salvador. <laughs> I don't know. We yeah. don't, nobody knows. Yeah, I don't know either. All right, well, with that, uh, what's the uh, guest interview we have coming up next week? On uh... Uh, This Thursday, we do have Brick BC. 
Yes, Brick from Australia. This will be interesting. He, what's his thing? He's doing. Um, was it? Uh, the dolphins. He real does, estate. He does real estate. Real estate uh, financing through uh, tokenization. Yes. So you can buy a token from him, which will help him buy a piece of real estate, or it lets you invest in a piece of real estate there in Australia. Now, unfortunately, you have to be accredited and you have to be a citizen of Australia, as far as I know. Um, uh, I, I spoke to him about that. He says no. You can buy directly from uh, um, uh, uh, fr from from his site. All right, good to know. If I tried doing it, he wouldn't let me. But we'll, we'll ask more about it when we. We will time. find out more in the interview coming up this Thursday. So you better tune in. 7 p.m. Pacific on Thursday. What was that? What's the date exactly? It's Thursday the second. So March second, 7 p.m. Check it out. And of course, if you don't get a chance, you can always check it out on our Patreon. With that, you can check out our coin tree. You can donate in any format of crypto that you choose. Also, asset aware, Raven, and Evermore uh, wallets. And uh, you can check out all of our social media stuff, which we appreciate. You can do. You can also see C3 Media. If you join our Discord, we have tokens. As we say at the end of every show, stack sats, stack sats and, and hodl. And hodl. Uh, Adios. Adios.